class welfare. And that's Order. why they're there, and that's Order. why we're here. Julianne Genta. Tenekwe, Mr. Speaker. Tenekwe to Etefale. I am very pleased to take a call to discuss responsible financial management, responsible economic management, and what that would mean for transport infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, as my colleague, the Honorable John Banks, just highlighted, our economy is facing a serious risk. We are facing low growth and high oil prices, and we are facing a zero budget. So it's now, more than ever, that we need to be sure that our transport investments over the next decade are going to get the greatest value for money, that we are investing in the best projects, which will make it easier for people and freight to get around, and that will respond to the changing needs of New Zealand. We have heard from the government that the RONS program is about economic productivity. But we have seen no evidence that a few motorways, which are incredibly expensive, are the best use of the transport fund over the next decade. In fact, we have evidence to the contrary. What is that evidence? A clear trend of stagnant traffic volumes since 2004. This is from the New Zealand Transport Agency's own data published in February 2012. And it's clear. And it, it's mirrored in other developed countries around the world. So when oil prices went up in 2008, a number of things happened. First of all, public transport, cycling and walking, they all went through the roof. And we've seen over 10% annual growth on the rail network in Auckland, on the bus network, on the northern busway. We've seen massive increases in walking and cycling. But many New Zealanders, don't feel safe walking and cycling because we haven't put enough money into that infrastructure. Many New Zealanders didn't have reliable bus or train services to switch to, and they had to spend more money getting around. This has flow-on consequences for our economy. Now, we hear from the government that the RONs aren't actually about reducing congestion, and it's really great that they admit that. No, the RONs are about freight, which according to the government is going to double sometime in the next 10 to 20 years. And as we've heard, freight needs roads. But there are two problems with this argument. Firstly, freight volumes have not increased over 2005 levels. And we heard this in the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee. The Ministry of Transport and NZTA both admitted that the National Freight Demand Study was wrong. Freight volumes haven't increased in five years. And therefore, it is now extremely unlikely or actually impossible that they could double in the time that has been forecast by the government. So these already shaky business cases for the RONs have not been updated to reflect reality. I think that's because this would make it even more obvious that they're not the best projects for us to be investing in at this time. But even if freight movements were growing, and, and freight definitely had to use roads, and most New Zealanders do have to drive, are the RONs the best way to make sure that freight is moving efficiently? Is it the best way to ensure that road users can get where they need to go? And the answer clearly would have to be no. Anyone who's looked and drilled down into the business cases for these motorway projects would see that in the best case scenario, they're just proposing to shave a few minutes off journey times between cities. And they wouldn't do anything to help road users or freight move through crowded cities, which is where the problems are. And freight is rarely more than 10% of traffic on these routes. It's only 1% of the traffic on the roads in Auckland at peak hour. So now our poor freight operators, through their road user charges, are actually going to be paying disproportionately for bad projects that aren't going to help their businesses. In fact, they're going to make the freight operators more vulnerable because as New Zealanders don't have alternatives, because the government's not investing in public transport, walking and cycling, and sustainable alternatives that enable them to avoid high oil prices, they have less money to spend. And this results in less money to buy products which are moved around New Zealand by our freight operators. And indeed, in 2009, we saw our freight operators lose massive amounts of their business because of the e worsening economic conditions which are linked to oil prices. 
All the Green Party is asking for, Mr. Speaker, is a rational evidence-based approach to transport priorities. And we look forward to working with the government on delivering this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Todd McClay. Mr. Speaker, it gives me...